Like for the longest time, we had issues with the dogs having to go outside to the bathroom because they have to travel down these steps down here. We decided to make a second landing because we just put this deck in like a little over a year ago. Made a second landing, we'll come down so Chloe will feel comfortable with stairs, and which that that's worked pretty well. Vivi over there, she's a little cowgirl. But anyway, we had issues with them going to the bathroom outside. Like they, you know, if you, the well, issues with them holding it completely inside and not like knowing that the outside's the bathroom. So I decided to become one with the dogs and nature. And I started coming out here with them, going to the bathroom as well. Now, not number two, but going to the bathroom number one. And we've got, as you can see, it's kind of isolated here. So nobody's, I have no audience. I wouldn't recommend this in a suburb, but start going out here you know every time I'd go with them I'd go to the bathroom as well and then I think they picked up and noticed that outside is where you go and they've done really well when we carry them to different places it's been, it's been a process but now they've completely developed the fact that outside is the bathroom I say this now but we've been incident free for a really long time uh, you know it's rare that anything comes about but you know, they've been great since, so just a little tip. Probably don't want to do it. You're probably thinking, what the hell? But you do what you got to do when you got dogs. You uh oh. Uh oh. Got UPS. Oh, yeah. And Chloe will guard the box like she's a little guard dog over the package. She wants to see what's in here just as much as I do, don't you, Chloe? I know what this is. This is from REI. Um, well made. It's really light. So, wow, the stitching is really well made on it. But anyway, this is a backpack cooler. Uh, you can see the uh, backpack. And it's well padded here, too. Wow. I was a little iffy on the stitching and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, that's the first thing I want to feel for. Because, you know, if that goes, it kind of defeats the purpose of a backpack cooler. A little place for something there but yeah this is nice but this is for the beach because I hate wagging stuff on and off the beach you know what I mean you know, a little handle in here oh, there's compartments inside of here somewhere somewhere oh I guess I gotta open this yeah just your standard cooler down in there and this whole thing comes out all right so i got the insert out which is this is the actual cooler it's got two handles on each side feels pretty thick really well made the pictures just doesn't do it justice i thought that it would be a little on the cheaper side of town for the price especially it's pretty cheap and you also got a little pocket on the inside for maybe a cell phone or wallet or something like that uh, but yeah that insert goes back down in there this is supposed to be waterproof. You got a pocket here. Um, and then the hood comes over. And you just throw this thing on and go. But yeah, you're supposed to get a long time. Long enough to be at the beach anyway. Holds 24 cans, I think, in there. So, perfect. And also, before I forget, the you can roll your towel up, your beach towel. You can put those through here. A couple beach towels will go in there. This is Evergreen branded. Uh, it's made by REI, or at least they pay for it to be put out. Uh, yeah, I didn't even pay that price for it. Let me see. See the price. They, this must came from their store. But it's free shipping. Originally $75. They've got marked out $39.93 or something on clearance. But I only paid a fraction of the price of that because I had a coupon code. 
I got this and something else. It hasn't came yet, so I guess it's shipping separate, but both ship for free, so it's kind of like a money loss for them, unless they're having to send this from different stores or something. All right, so I'm testing out products for companies, right? I do it on a regular basis. And here's a product that was sent to me. It, whenever it hits the sun, solar panels all the way around, you know, you get a fountain, right? Well, it's got to charge, sorta, or uses the energy of the sun right away. There's no battery. I don't know if there's a battery or not. But, pretty much, hey, we're going to just test this out for a period of time, making sure it's good. And the cool thing is, I think the thing's like six bucks. So I'm going to do a segment that as I get products in, I'll try to get a collection of those and you know, it'll be products for under 10 bucks that are good and then I'll do the review on this and other products as well into one and then I'll divide those out into individual reviews for Amazon for video reviews as well. So testing this solar fountain and I realize the point of it that they want you to move water because you don't want stagnant water if you got like a little small fish pond and that's it's kind of impressive right there for I mean I just took it out of the box it didn't start working until I set it out in the sun so I mean so far I'm impressed for six bucks Chloe and Vivi absolutely love sunbathing I don't think there's anything greater in their lives that they love better than sunbathing look at that the Nutra lunch is what is this chicken noodle soup and it is was it seven and a half ounces? And you just warm it up with that top on and that's it. It's actually not that bad. We got the GoPro uh, microphone adapter. We got this cool thing here, which is a black bolt. Uh, what this does will give you time lapse. Uh, and actually will just slowly turn and you've got different settings for it. Now this isn't the egg timer thing that you see hack. This is actual electronic device. It takes batteries, are actually rechargeable. And then you can set your speeds and whatever else and the top will turn real slow for your time lapse so you can have some turning in with your time lapse. And it's got your, you know, quarter inch thread there, whatever. Uh, a couple cables. The GoPro adapter turns it over to that so you can put it on anything you want. Uh, charger, batteries, three, and a three battery charger. GoPro itself uh, with a nice case on it here. And waterproof case. Stuff that comes with this will fit into here when I'm done. I was able to put everything that you saw earlier in here. Batteries are there. Empty case there, cameras inside that case there, uh, the charger, the, uh, what is that, black bolt, uh, time lapse camera thingy, the adapters there, uh, another extra adapter there, all the cables and everything else is in here in this pocket. Boom, closes down. I mean, the adapters are rattling against each other a little bit, but everything else is in there pretty snug. I love this case. Who's this by? Sma case? Sma case? But yeah, this is absolutely best bang for your buck and, and you know any action camera can can fit in here in my opinion uh doesn't necessarily have to be a gopro but then you got all these extra foam inserts which are very well cut out and you've got little cutouts inside those as well so save those retain those and this turns into a versatile case that you can keep going through additions of different things like so as you uh, update your setup you can change them and it'll fit so definitely cool I am so freaking excited to finally get to start editing this Hard Block six month video. I think it hits home to me uh, because I really liked Hard Block and I feel like I've just been let down by them for like the past six months doing the unboxing, seeing the products laid out before me. It's like, man, I just got screwed. You know, it's, I made the best move that I made was going to Adobe Premiere CC. It's it's just so much easier to edit. like. I try to take the lazy way out sometimes, and I use that Corel up there. I've used Cyberlink. You always run into issues. I'm using big file formats now because of this. This is the Blackmagic uh, external recorder. 
Uh, here is my camera that I record stuff down here, which is actually just, uh, let's see if you can see around the side. That's actually just a Sony A7 uh, with a uh, camera rig and stuff like that on it. But that's the stay down here unit for recording if I'm at the desk. But I recorded for like 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. And it's over 70 gigs. And that's on the smallest uh, compression that that external recorder records at. It would be much larger if I went with a, a full, I mean it compresses, but not that much when you go to the highest uh, setting level, but you're left with hardly no record time on an SD card either, a 128 gig SD card. So uh, I mean I like it because it records directly off the, the sensor through the clean HDMI out port on the Sony A7. So the point was to do away with the, um, if you go full. Uh, on the A7, A7, Sony A7, 1080p, 60 frames per second. I think it only records for 10 minutes at a time or 20 minutes at a time or something like that. And it starts a new file. <clears throat> when it does that, it's a little hiccup in there. And if you've synced all the audio and you're doing an external audio source and you sync all your audio up to that video, you're left with like a split second that's where it stops and starts a new file. Um, and then when you add your audio onto it, your audio will be out of sync at the end of the video because it's taking these snips out to for form a new file and then when you put it all in there you're out of sync at the end even though you've got a solid audio source all the way across so then you have to mess with it for a long period of time to get it back into sync and it's a big pain so I went external recording you know because I'm gonna get a solid record time it's not gonna stop so, man, it's going to record better quality right off the sensor. So it's like updating to a new camera, to a camcorder, um, but not having to. And then sometimes the A7 would overheat. It's not doing that. It's not recording. It's not doing anything but sitting there. And, you know, I don't push anything on the A7. I do it all on the external recorder, and it just records through the clean HDMI out. So awesome way to go. It's a little this, but not bad. It's not bad at all when you're considering what you would have to buy in a camcorder for it to do that itself and then you would deal with all that compression and lost data so I mean even though I'm gonna lose it because whenever I render this out uh, in post it will compress it to H.264 or whatever it is for YouTube but it's not gonna compress it twice sorta of. it will but anyway it looks better <laughs> Oh,